Parvovirus impacts everybody. Emotionally, financially, the implications are, are huge. Imagine you are a family, you just went to the shelter, you just brought home the puppy, kids have named the puppy, they've picked out the harness and the leash, and all of a sudden the puppy has diarrhea or stops eating. You come to the hospital, the puppy's diagnosed with parvo. It can really impact us operationally, but more importantly, emotionally. I mean, it's, it could be just absolutely devastating to care for these puppies for so long. The blood, sweat, and tears, especially our technicians who are in there with them every hour, right? Cleaning and feeding, especially in times where a lot of hospitals are short staffed. And if we lose a parvo puppy, it's, it can be absolutely devastating to our entire hospital. The frustrating thing about parvo is when we think about the treatment, it's really about how can we control the clinical signs? And so we focus on fluids, we focus on nutrition, pain medications, we focus on anti-nausea medications, glucose supplementation, and those antibiotics. And we've had to let the disease run its course and hope that we can buy the puppies enough time to heal themselves. Canine parvovirus monoclonal antibody is the first USDA conditionally approved monoclonal treatment for parvovirus. And the exciting part of this treatment is that we finally have a treatment that targets the virus itself. It's binding the virus in the bloodstream, neutralizing it, and preventing it from reaching those target organs, like the GI tract. If we can intervene early, if we can neutralize the virus, the goal and the hope is that the puppy doesn't get as sick to begin with. Or if the puppy is sick, that we can get them feeling better more quickly and get them out of the hospital. So really, it's about introducing it as part of your current standard of care treatments. But what we know, if we want to target the most virus in the bloodstream as possible, we want to do it early. So as soon as you have a puppy that has clinical signs, they've tested positive for parvo, and they're eight weeks of age or older, we want to go ahead and give that single IV injection. The other wonderful thing about this CPMA treatment is that it's a one-time dose. There's nothing else I do to treat parvo that is a one and done. So it's really amazing to have a one-time IV treatment that again, you're gonna add to all of your standard of care treatments for parvovirus. Some puppies can be pretty mildly affected and some can be severely and critically ill. So there's a wide spectrum of care that can be provided even in those puppies where they're gonna be treated outpatient because fortunately they have mild clinical signs, what we'll do in our hospital is we test them, of course, for parvo. We see that they're parvo positive. We'll go ahead and get their outpatient plan together, but the first thing we're gonna do is give that CPMA injection. It's one time IV dose, and then we're gonna send them home with the traditional standard of care treatments. And similarly, in our inpatient parvo puppies, so our puppies that we are going to need to hospitalize, we place that IV catheter, we're getting their blood samples for their blood work, we're starting their IV fluids, and as part of that first round of treatments, we're also giving that single IV dose of CPMA. With the efficacy study, puppies that received CPMA, they stopped vomiting sooner, they started eating more quickly, their lethargy resolved sooner, and if we think about parvo, these are the things that keep these puppies in the hospital. So if they stop vomiting, if they start eating, we're gonna be able to get them out of the hospital more quickly. And that is the goal. That is the goal with CPMA. The goal is to save lives, but hopefully to get these puppies feeling better more quickly so they can get home to their families 